He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. All right. Good morning, church family. Hey, those of you online, you know, please like and subscribe. Uh, we're here to share the love of God. And if you're into that, that'll help us get the word out. So um, with that being said, let's talk a little bit about what we're to do. Let's talk about the fact that we are called to grow in every aspect as Christians. And God left us instructions on how to grow. You know, a lot of the Old Testament is filled with instructions on how to eat. Um, it's filled with instructions on how to um, take care of ourselves. And sadly, in the Old Testament, these were things people had to do, but we've been freed from that through Christ Jesus. But many of these choices are still good for our health. So the point still remains, live as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care of yourself. Keep your body clean and pure and to the best of your ability, follow God. Have a heart set on Him. So let, let, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 14 verses 1 through 21. We'll be also going into Romans 8 because, you know, as we read these Old Testament laws, eight. a lot of these... Uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 14. 14. As we look at these Old Testament laws, we need to understand that we have been saved by the grace of Christ Jesus. That the law was fulfilled through Christ. But a lot of these things, a lot of these things that are, are given for health and diets is really beneficial to our body. And it's something that we shouldn't just throw away. We should look at it and say, okay, hey, look, God gave us this instruction, gave the Hebrews, the Israelites, this instruction for a reason. He was looking out for the best of their well-being. So even though we've been freed from the laws, we got the ability to be able to eat pigs or birds or whatever we want. Yep. Yeah that God's instruction was there for a reason. And we do want to take care of ourselves to the best of our ability because we are the temple of the Spirit. Our body is the temple of the Lord. We don't have to go to a temple as the Old Testament people did mm. to worship. They didn't have to go to, we don't have to go to a mountain as the Old Testament people did to worship. We now have the gift of the Holy Spirit and we need to let God be working inside us and living inside us and we need to be taking care of that temple to the best of our ability. That's part of the Christian life is learning that self-control. Like I said, following these things ain't going to save you. We're saved by the grace of God through what Christ Jesus did. But it'll make our time here on earth better. And if we have a better life, we can be more effective. Yeah. So let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy 14, 1 through 21. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor shave the front of your heads for the dead. Mm. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to prepare for himself a special treasure above all peoples who are on the face of the earth. Now this was being written to the Israelites, yeah. to the Hebrews, before they went in and took place, mm. took control of Israel, before God gave it over to them. This was Moses telling them, hey look, you've been set aside. You've been chosen. Mm. Don't go and do this stuff for the dead. Don't mm. go and, and cut yourself and make marks on your body permanently mm. for the dead. You're to give your bodies to the Lord to give Him glory. You've been set aside for a special treasure above all peoples. Now what is that? That's the, they're the bloodline that God was using for Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. No other people can claim that Jesus came from them. 
but the Jewish people that God picked can. That was God's promise to them. All of salvation comes through Christ Jesus. It says, these are the animals which you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roe deer, the wild goat, the mountain goat, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. You may eat every animal with cloved hooves, having hooves, having the hooves split in two parts, and that choose cud among the animals. That's grass. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, those that chew the cud and have cloven hooves, you shall not eat such as these, the camel, the hare, the rock hyrax, for they chew the cud, but do not have cloven hooves. They are unclean for you to eat. Now, one animal I think of when I think of a solid hood, hoof that's not cloven, that eats grass, is a horse. horse. You know, and I have never seen a horse on a menu, thank God. Yeah. But you know, that's something that God wouldn't recommend he called it, he would have called it dirty according to the old law. It's not beneficial for your body. That last one you so, said in mine calls it the badger. The badger? Wild badger. No, rock badger, excuse me. Oh yeah, yeah, the rock badger. I'm glad yours says that because I did have no idea what a hyrax was. Mm. <laughs> also, the swine is unclean <coughs> for you because it has cloven hood, yet does not chew cud. Mm. You shall not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcasses. Mm -hmm. These you may eat of all the that are in the waters. You may eat all of them that have fins and scales, mm -hmm. and whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It's right. unclean for you. Crab. No crab. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. No crab, right? No. That, that was unhealthy. Yeah. It's unhealthy for you. Once again, we've been free no from these man. laws, but these are still really, really good advice yeah. to take care of yourself. Right. All birds you may eat, but these you shall not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the red kite, the falcon, the kite after their kinds. Mm -hmm. You know, birds of prey. In other points of scriptures, what it says. Mm -hmm. Every kind of raven after its kind. The oarstrek, the short-eared owl, the seagull, the hawk after their kinds. The little owl, the screech owl, the white owl. Once again, these are all birds of prey. Mm -hmm. the, the jackal, the carrion vulture, the fisher owl, the stork, the heron after its own kind. And, and the hoopo and the bat. Also, every creeping thing that flies is unclean. For you, they shall not be eaten. Mm. The four bat? Mine says lopwing. Lop, lopwing? Yeah. Lopwing. I still ain't sure what that is between hoopo and lopwing. No. Nope. <laughs> you may eat all clean birds. You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the alien who is within your gates so that he may eat it or you may sell it to the foreigner for you are a holy people to the Lord your God mm -hmm. you shall not boil young goats in their mother's milk so you know as this is pointing out the foreigner could still have this stuff the alien could still have this stuff but these are people that have been set aside for the glory of God for Christ to come and the thing is nowadays as Christians we've been set aside for a purpose and we're gonna be counted as children of God we are to live as children of the King to prepare ourselves as children of the King to stand out from among the rest now we do not do this stuff to be saved it's not part of God's covenant with us but God does want us to take care of our body because our body is a temple. That means if you've gone out and got a tattoo, it does not mean that you're, you're going to be unforgiven. Your sins were paid for. Mm. You know, you made permanent markings to yourself. Your sins were paid for. Yes. 
It's not the unforgivable sin, but it's not a recommendation. And once you've come to Christ, that you go out and start putting other people's names in memory of yeah. your mom or in memory of yeah. your grandpa, right? Oh, because man. your body needs to be something that glorifies God. Um. Anyway, so I'm, I'm not putting down old tattoos. I mean, if, if you're if God's put it on your heart to go tattoo scriptures all over your body, that's between you and Him. Again. You get what I'm saying? Something that brings Him glory, do everything you do under the glory of God. But make sure that it's God actually moving you in that direction. Amen. Um, remember, we're free by the blood of Christ. Yes. But we do need to take care of our temple. Amen. Things okay. like not cutting our bodies or shaving our heads for the dead and when I was talking about tattoos you'll find that in Leviticus mm -hmm. um, it's I think either 1928 I believe it is could be wrong I'm not looking right at it at the moment but um you know the purpose that was brought up for in Leviticus was the people at the time that God was taken out of the land they were they were people who were tattooing themselves for their gods, their mm -hmm. fake gods, and they were tattooing themselves for the dead, and they weren't. They, they were doing it in an ungodly manner. So God said, "Hey, don't be like these people. Don't do it in a way that's gonna confuse people." Mm -hmm. So God just said, "Well, rather stand out from among them. Don't Amen. do it at all, right? Because yeah. God wanted His people to be set apart. Yeah, and God still likes us to be set apart by the blood of Christ." Don't you? You know, we're, we're not to go out and be involved in the sexual orgies and the drunkenness and the ways of the world. We are to live as Christians and to share people about the hope and the love of God, to, to love our enemy when they don't deserve it. Think about it. It's easy to love somebody you care for, but to love your enemy even when they don't deserve it. That's the kind of love God wants us to show. So I, I kind of want to... Real quick, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. It says, Or do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you had from God, and you are not your own? You were brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You know, as Christians, we're called to take care of ourselves because we are not our own. And God wants us to take care of our temple. Yeah. Something, you hear about all these different sins, people attacking sexual sins. You hear about people attacking the sins of, um, of drugs and alcohol and all these other sins. But there's one that's really rampant among Christians that is not ever brought up, and that's the sin of gluttony. Yeah. We're to watch our diet. We're to take care of ourselves. We're called to be the best we can, and it's not to be saved. It's so that we can have that better quality of life to share the love of God. Yeah. And the Corinthians were the worst. And the Corinthians were the worst at it. That's why that scripture is there, <laughs> you know. And also, it points out that we are a possession. Mm. We are either a slave to sin, mm. or we are, a, are owned and freed by the blood of Christ. Praise God. If we are freed because of the blood of Jesus Christ, why is it so important to take care of our bodies? It's because our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's kind of what I want people to remember today. It is our place of worship. We have the Spirit of God living within us. Mm. This is a great blessing to be able to seek God with our whole heart. The Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. Mm. And I love that because it lets you know, hey, look, when you've accepted what Christ has done for you, when you've given your life for Him, when you've repented, the Holy Spirit mm. is up within you. 
and it is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance, guaranteeing that when you die, you're going to heaven. And it's not because of what you've done or what you do, it's because of what Christ Jesus did. We all fall short. You're going to make mistakes, but that's okay. As long as you are following God and seeking Him daily, living for Him, He's already taken care of you. Okay. Let's read Romans 8, 10 through 16. And if Christ is in your body, or if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Stop and think about this for a second. How are we found righteous? Only through Christ Jesus. Our bodies are dead to sin. Think about what John 3.36 says. It says that if you believe in the Son, that's Christ Jesus, you shall have everlasting life. Right. But if you believe not in the Son, then God's wrath remains upon you. What is the wages of sin? That's death. If you haven't accepted what Christ did, that, that wage is upon you. It says, but because of Christ Jesus... Our spirit is alive because of the righteousness that's found through him. It says, But if the spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. What's it telling me? It's telling me that if I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, if I'm made righteous through him, I have the Holy Spirit upon me. Amen. It's a gift that God has given me. Projector. Some people go out and try to say that, that having the Holy Spirit in you, you don't have it until you speak tongues. Yeah. But well, Paul well. said, I wish that all could have this gift, but not everybody does. Right. So understand that if you haven't spoken tongues, it don't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit is something God deposits on you when you've accepted what Christ's done. To keep you alive. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit came down like a dove yeah. descending. And it was representative of what happens when we change. That's when he was baptized. When the Spirit of God comes into our life, when we accept what Christ Jesus did, when we receive that Jesus died on the cross and rose again yeah. for our sins. Therefore, brother, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Mm -hmm. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Amen. This is what I was talking about a minute ago. We're not to go out and live in those drunken and sexual orgies in the way of the world. We are to take care of ourselves in a godly manner, to, to, to live apart, to, to shine as a light in a dark world, to share God's love, to show God's love. To work together as Christians. Amen. To glorify God. Amen. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Amen. It's a promise. Yeah. It's a promise that, that once you've accepted Christ, you're not only filled with the Holy Spirit, but you've now been adopted as a child of God. Amen. And not just a child where it says you're a red-headed stepchild like Uncle Will or Cinderella. He treats you no different than he would any other child. It says, For God, for, for you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Understand what Abba, Father means. It means Daddy God. Abba. Abba, Father. Daddy God. Daddy God. That's a close relationship. Many people say they got a dad. Mm -hmm. Many people say they got a father. But do you call him daddy? Have you pulled him? Do you have a close relationship with him? It says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of 
God. Amen. You ever start doubting your faith? You ever start doubting whether or not you're saved or been forgiven? Understand that that Holy Spirit bears witness that you're a child of God. Amen. Do not give up. Do not fall into the lies of the enemy, which will try to get you to turn away. Understand that you are a blood-bought child of God. The enemy has no power over you. You have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And if you haven't, understand that our salvation comes through Jesus. Amen. He paid for your sins on the cross, and all you got to do is believe. You want that peace, you want that hope, you want that salvation? Put your trust in Christ Jesus today. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, Amen. you will, will, it don't say might, Maybe. it says you will be saved. It says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, mm. and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Mm. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Amen. Understand, Jesus paid your way. Yes. Start a relationship with him today. Makes an eternity a difference. Be blessed. Amen.